This is ABC 7 News at 6.30. Good evening again. I'm Pete Wilson. And I'm Jessica Aguirre. A plan to change the way we elect the president is picking up steam tonight. It's an idea hatched by a Stanford professor and an East Bay attorney. And it's been endorsed by the New York Times and lawmakers from both sides of the aisle. NBC 7's political reporter Mark Matthews has our story. In the 2004 presidential campaigns, George Bush and John Kerry did not campaign in California didn't buy political ads here, didn't do town hall meetings. They were too busy doing all of those things in a dozen or so other states where voters were more evenly divided. In a presidential race, a small number of so-called battleground states get most of the money and attention. I mean, as we all know, uh, if you live in a state that is not a battleground state like California, your vote doesn't count. It doesn't matter. Lafayette attorney Barry Fadham says he's found a very simple way to make every vote in every state count. The president of the United States should be elected by the national popular vote. In other words, whoever wins the most votes nationwide is the winner. And that has not always been the case. Remember back in 2000 when Al Gore got the most votes? George Bush won the White House. And did you know that just four years later, a switch of just 60,000 votes in Ohio could have cost President Bush his re-election, could have wiped out a three million vote advantage. That's because we award the presidency not to the popular winner, but to whoever wins the vote of the Electoral College. Here's how it works. Each state counts its votes, and the state's winner gets all of the state's electoral votes. In California, for example, that is 55 electoral votes. The first candidate to amass 270 electoral votes is declared the winner. Adam says there is a simple way to get around that electoral college system. We, the following state, <clears throat> agree that we will award all of our electoral votes to whoever wins the most votes nationwide. If just a relatively few states could agree to award their electoral votes to the nationwide winner, that's all it would take. And the Stanford professor who dreamed up the idea says it's completely legal. Well, the founding fathers gave the states exclusive control over how they allocate their electoral votes. There's nothing in the Constitution that needs to be changed in order to have nationwide popular election. Dr. John Koza admits battleground states might be reluctant to change the system, but take all of those battleground states and add in the marginally close states. You still have only a relatively few compared to all of the safe states that would benefit from changing the system. The New York Times endorsed this proposal of a week ago, and the uh, Chicago Sun-Times uh, endorsed it. By the end of 2006, uh, we expect to have a bill that would accomplish a nationwide popular vote proposal introduced in all 50 states. In California's assembly, there is already a bill to change the way the state allocates its electoral votes. It's due to come up for a hearing in the next three weeks. In San Francisco, Mark Matthews, ABC 7 News. Now, there is a website dedicated to this idea. We have a link to it at abc7news.com. All you have to do is click on our politics page.